What's going on guys? I'm Pete and this is Retro Game Attic. Here's a Pokemon Pikachu, or Pocket Pikachu as it's known in Japan. It was released in the wake of the digital pets, mainly the Tamagotchi that was popular in the mid to late 90s. The Pocket Pikachu was released in Japan, North America, and Europe in 1998. I remember seeing these things in Toys R Us at the time, and I wasn't super interested since I was more into like the N64 and the PlayStation back then, but I always thought it was a pretty cool design since it kind of resembled a small blobby looking Game Boy. And I happen to now be a proud owner of one of these units, so let's take a closer look. It's much smaller than the original Game Boy, but it does have a tiny D-pad, B&A button, star and select buttons, and a reset button that is recessed a little bit into the casing. The buttons are kind of spongy as one would expect, and they are particularly tiny for my adult hands, but I could still get it to work. It has a small LCD display and a cool little clip integrated into the back of the unit. So I got this Pocket Pikachu off of eBay. I was just going around the site and I must have clicked on this ad and then the seller sent me a private offer. The unit itself looks like it's in pretty good physical condition from the photos, but the seller said that it doesn't power on. I counted with a $24 offer and the seller accepted. And a few days later I had my very own Pocket Pikachu at my doorstep. I always like to just clean off the unit for good measure before I start working on it. I spray a little bit of Mrs. Myers on a paper towel and then wipe the unit down. I'm barely in the shot here, so you're gonna have to take my word for it. All right, cool, looks good. The LCD screen is kind of recessed in here, so I'm gonna take a Q-tip and wipe down the edges. And finally, I'm gonna take a little bit of Goo Gone on a paper towel and wipe off that small little blue scratch on the front of the Pocket Pikachu. So now that it's pretty clean, I'm gonna test the unit with a new battery. It takes a CR2032 button battery, so let's swap it out there. And wow, it actually works. The speaker does too. The buttons though are not very responsive, so I want to tear it down and clean it out so hopefully they'll make better contact. So let's get going. I'll remove the three Phillips head screws holding the back half of the casing on, and I just want to be careful not to pull the back half off since there are wires soldered from the battery compartment to the motherboard. We can just let it hang while we keep going though. So next there are four screws holding the motherboard in place. I'm going to be very careful taking the pedometer assembly out. It's held in place with a screw and a very thin, easily losable wire, and that's connected to the bottom of it. so it can and bounce up and down simulating a walking motion. We'll flip the motherboard over and now you can see the face button contacts. I'm just going to take another q-tip, soak it with 91% isopropyl alcohol and wipe down the button contacts. I'm also going to wipe down the bottom of the rubber button pads to remove any dust or residue. So from here we just reassemble in reverse order. I put the button pads back, we'll get the motherboard situated back in, and we'll screw those screws back in. Now this part was a little tricky getting the small plastic mount for the pedometer back in, but I eventually got it. And next we'll get the longer swivel pedometer part back in. I put the wire back in bending left when it should bend right, so I'm going to fix that. And here you can see the wire is bowing right now, so it can bounce up and down freely. Next, I'll close the back of the case up, get those screws in, and reinstall the fresh battery and power it on. Whoa, what a difference cleaning the button pads and contacts make. It's still an old school piece of child's tech, so I'm not expecting greatness, but the buttons are much more responsive now that we clean them. The pedometer moves freely and counts my steps as it should, and the speaker is nice and loud. Overall, I'm super happy how this came out, and I'm just going to keep it as more of a display piece. For $24, you really can't beat this. A lot of these older gaming items are pretty robust, and a lot of the time it's just a matter of cleaning, realigning parts, or just tightening something up in there. What I'm getting at is sometimes if you want to save money and try a little new project, I would suggest looking for some broken or for parts or repair items on eBay or wherever. You are rolling the dice here and may actually buy something that's not fixable or not worth fixing, but sometimes you get lucky like this. So there it is guys, one more pocket Pikachu saved and it's put back in service. I want to thank you guys so much for watching Retro Game Attic. I'm having a great time trying to revive this small little channel and share my collection and overall retro gaming journey with you guys. I seriously appreciate each and every one of you, and thank you guys again. Later.